Okay, boys and girls, Mr. V here, DK, taking a look at a Fender Pro Reverb 60s era. Customer brought it in. I've done some other work for him. He's a nice guy. We get along okay. It's probably why I took it, because I'm backlogging, trying to catch up and whatever. But this one looked to be, like it might be straightforward, it might be a bleeding nightmare, I don't know. He said everything works. But it doesn't sound like a Fender should. So, anyway. Just took a brief look. It has had an electrolytic cap job. Somebody looks like, looks like they did sprigs. They J-hooked them. Okay. He asked me to test all the resistors and see, you know, if something was out of tolerance. You can come now and take a look at the resistors here. You know, we got... We got the usual suspects down there, you know, they go bad, but the moment I took a look at this, okay, number one, we have a piece of duct tape where a rectifier tube should be. That don't look like the transformer to belong in this amp, and there's two diodes to take the place of the rectifier tube. Somebody did kind of a clean job of putting an inappropriate power transformer in this. These things run on pretty stout voltages, so my feeling is, is this is probably under-voltaging the amp or something, but it's definitely not the trans transformer that goes into this. I'm hoping they didn't hack up the body too bad. It looks like we have some hammer dings or something there, I don't know. But the transformer that belongs in it should look a little more like this. This big boy is from Weber. They were the most affordable substitute, so we're going to start there. Okay, so we've got our Weber power transformer in there. Green windings are for the filaments and the light bulb. The blue with the red stripe, they actually make these with the fender colors, so the blue with the red stripe is the bias supply. That's the center tap for the power windings. There's a red-white, which is a lower voltage power winding. We're not using that in this case. The red is the high voltage. The yellow is the filament voltages. Again, this is for our rectifier tube, which we have a Sovtech rectifier tube there. Um, and then we came in and powered onto our switch. So we're operable in that facet. We do have bias voltage. I turned it up so I have maximum negative voltage just to make sure that you know when we flip the power tubes on if our new power transformer has a higher voltage than the other one we're not going to overcurrent them and then we get to go through this and try to find bum resistors um, and test tubes and all of that stuff oh yeah and some dirty rat installed a five amp fuse in this and if you read that it says it wants a two amp slow blow fuse so I changed that. I say somebody was in here before and didn't do a horrible job as far as like converting it to a three prong grounding cord and removing the death cap and uh, you know I don't know why that other transformer was in there. I mean the workmanship wasn't horrible but some of the decisions leave me a little perplexed. Okay so back here the 1k and the 4 47, 4.7, 4 4.7, and 4.7 and 1K were out of whack, so we replaced those. These are supposed to be originally 70s, they're 100s, these were 20s originally, they're 22s now. Um, I don't think that 70 to 100 is too bad of a difference, I'll let it slide. Okay, so down here at our power tube sockets, uh, our grid resistors are 1.5K, and then we have those 470 screens. The 470 screens, one was on, one was off. They didn't match. And then these 1.5Ks, those things, they, they look a little roasty, and they were, one of them I think was like 3K, and the other was 2.5K, so that's no good. Um, other than that, the resistors generally checked out okay, so I think we're going to kick the tires and light the fires here. The um, preamp tubes that were in here are all like silver tones and radio shacks, you know, nothing exciting. But the power tubes are actually good, so, you know, if it, I'll talk to Buddy about that, but they all tested okay. 
Okay, so we're operable, we're biased according to what Fender says to do from the factory. Our rectifier is rectifying. But with we have no volume right now. Listen to this. We've got the most microphonic train wreck of tubes. This one's blatantly obvious. That one's the most obvious there. Ugh, junk tubes. I was going to say those Silver Tone and Radio Shack weren't impressing me. They're still not. Okay, so after replacing three tubes, two Silver Tones and a Radio Shack, we can now tap, and I don't hear it in the speaker, and effectively with the volume turned down we have achieved the equivalent of silence. Our bench speaker isn't making noise worth a dooley squat, so that's awesome. I have been getting so many scam calls today. Seriously. Okay, so we've been able to sound check it. And it's plenty loud, plenty clear, it's quiet, it sounds okay to me. Uh, I think, you know, everything looks normal. We're running all the correct voltages. The bias is set according to what Fender likes and None of our tubes make ringy dingy noises anymore. So at this point, I suppose we just need to let the customer evaluate what it sounds like and see if he thinks it sounds like a fender now. It does to me, but... And again, I don't know technically what a fender sounds like. I say facetiously, you know. From model to model to model, everybody has a sound in their head, and whether it's what, you know, you think they think, whatever, but we're working.